Hi, welcome to Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv, where we invite veterans to share their experiences and challenges of coming home. I'm your host, Jeff Bornstein, along with my host, Kimberly. Hey. Hello. We have two wonderful vets. We've been getting a lot of great vets on this show, haven't we? Oh, uh, we really today have. we have uh, we have Jacob Zatino and Mitch Orsat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit about Mitch. Um, he was in the Marine Reserves for a total of eight years, and he also was active in Operation Desert Shield. Desert mm -hmm. Shield. Yep. But our first guest today, he's from Silver Springs, Maryland. He joined the Army in 2002, and he served for 10 years, and he had one tour over in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. wow. That's a that's cool. Yeah. Well, Please uh, welcome uh, Jacob Zatino. Jacob, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks awesome. for being here, Jacob. Yeah. No, thank you again. So you had one tour over in Afghanistan? Yep, one tour there. Wow. How'd that go? Uh, a great experience, you know. <laughs> it, it had to have been hot. Good experience. <laughs> I was fortunate, but, uh, you know, there's always the bad things that happen and sure. everything. But overall, you know, I learned a lot from it. I took a lot out of it. Wow. So. A lot of people wow. here in Afghanistan, you know, it's hot. So were you able to <laughs> witness? You were there really for hot, years, yeah. so did you get I to? Got both worlds. You got both worlds? Because so I was out in Bagram. So too? Oh, yeah. We were right there, and it's like a, like a little depression there. And you have the mountains, the Hindu Kush mountains. Oh, wow. So Which one, the border of Pakistan or something like that, too? Or? Yeah, Pakistan yeah. and India. Mm -hmm. I mean, those mountains lead right into Everest. So <coughs> Jeez, wow. it got cold. Wow. Cold. Very and cold. Then, and so, then Jacob, you... let's, go, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let, let's okay. start back there, okay? Mm -hmm. What made you sign up and join the Army? Um, I wanted to do something for myself, you know, kind of mm -hmm. go out on my own, different adventure. Ever since I was young, I was always gone. I was going surfing, backpacking, camping. I just wanted to do something. And I figure if I'm going to do it, you know, let me do that and then do something for my country at the same time. Nice. You know, That's fantastic. Set it all on my own. Wow. So you're in the Army, you're in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and it's cold, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, what was your MOS? What did you do? Uh, I was an idiot, Mike. Which is a motor transportation operator. Okay, motor pool. So you pole. worked in transportation? Yeah, I did. Uh, I worked in driving. transportation. Oh, okay, awesome. I worked in the motor pool. Yeah, oh, as okay. a civilian. Yeah, I worked in the motor pool. All right, so then you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, pretty much drive charge, anything with wheels. Right, right. So. In charge of making sure all the vehicles had gas in, in the vehicles. Yeah, I did. Right? Yeah, right. Oh, good. And I kept yeah, up with the mileage that. and stuff, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, but so, I did a lot of different jobs. Uh, that was just my main one. Uh -huh. uh, like everything else in the Army, you learn pretty much sure. a lot of things. Sure. So. Uh, did, did you cross over into any other jobs? Uh, I mean, we're all, we're all at 11 Bravo when we go in, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Right? 11 yeah. Bang Bang. <laughs> but uh, were you able to use that skill um, uh, when you got out? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, that skill um, with a lot of the driving, uh, well, it made me a better driver. Okay. Too, That's know. good. We That's always a good have thing. bad drivers out there on the road. Mm -hmm. But um, what I did, because I worked a lot with the generals and with protocol bureau and everything like that. And so I did a lot of the transportation and the strategic plannings for them, the visitors coming in and out. So I was able to use a lot of that um, with uh, just having the leadership skills. That's there, fantastic. You know. That is. So there's That's a good. picture up on the screen right here. You'd see it. And uh, what is this? Oh, you're, wow. you're, you're, uh, you got a backpack on. That looks really oh, yeah. heavy. What, what, what is it? You won an, you yeah. you won an award for this? Yeah. Uh, what, what, that's what, about uh, 35 pounds in there. And it's wow. about 18 kilometers is what you do. Um, and it's for the German sports badge. Okay. And it was uh, it was a good good little trek. And this was in uh, Weiden, Germany. Uh huh. This was a month after getting there for the first time. Wow. They were like, "Hey, do you want to participate?" And I was like, "Why not?" And it was fun. It Let's was good. do it. Yeah. It was what, a great what year time. were you? Welcome you were in Germany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were two thousand. No, what, uh, you were in two thousand two. You were in Germany. Uh, no, no, that's when I first entered the military. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you so joined in two thousand two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But you served for 10 years, though, yeah, right? Yeah, 10 years. So, nice. but you only did one tour in Afghanistan. What did uh -huh. you do, like, during that other time? Those other times, I went to a lot of different um, installations. But were you here um. in the United States? Mm -hmm. you yes. Were? Yeah, okay. with the exception of Germany and then uh, the one tour in Afghanistan. Okay. Everywhere else, I was in several duty stations. Oh, and, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now the, you've, you've got out of the Army. Mm -hmm. So now, what is your life like now, living life after war? What, what are you doing now? What, what was it like? Oh, wow. It was, um, well, in the transition of getting out, I was trying to figure out what did I want to do. Mm -hmm. And there was just uh, many things. I knew I wanted to pursue, you know, getting into acting, you know, getting into the, the industry, the film industry. And um, for that program, I had to wait for the next fall. What program so, is that? So, uh, for the Conservatory Acting in New York Film okay. in uh, New York City. Okay. Mm -hmm. and Which is, is that where you're from originally? Connecticut? You're from Connecticut. Oh, from, from, Maryland. from Maryland. From yeah. Okay. But I grew up uh, most of my life, too, in uh, Northern California. Okay. okay. So, mm -hmm. it was... Um, well, I mean, what, was your, what was your driving force? I mean, you're, in, you're, you're, you're driving vehicles. 
Where does it say, I want to be an actor? Yeah. <laughs> where did that come Actually, from? since I was young. Since I was young. You okay. I've done a lot passion. of different um, plays. And, oh, nice. Okay. You know, I've never lost so that, that. So it's so. deep rooted. Got, got yeah. you. Okay, got you. So I guess the military kind of helped me get more experiences. So good, that way, good, if I'm good. ever working at and acting. Okay. Did you use the GI Bill whenever you I did. went to school? Okay. Or yes. after you got out? To yeah, that? immediately after I got out, um, in that transition of waiting to be uh, in that school, I went to the dive academy. I pretty much grew up around water all my life. Oh, that's awesome. And so I Why was like... Why didn't you go Navy? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I wasn't yeah. going to do the Navy. <laughs> no Army. offense to anyone out there, but... It's all good, man. Yeah, no. Yeah, we joke about it. It's like, yeah. what branch? Air Force? Yeah, you, you joke about it. Then when you get on the battlefield, you know, everyone's got everyone else's butt, right? Exactly. You're all on the, the same team. Right? We have more boats in the Navy, you know right. I mean? anyway, right, right, so, right, right. you know, right. they just have more battleships, hey. so... Yeah, they so, got it. so you're doing a deep sea dive thing. Yeah, and uh, is that that's that's with the bell and and like um, oh yeah, like uh, bell and everything. Yeah, like a silver light or a Mach five helmets. Uh, most people know the Mach five. You know the old like mm -hmm. like those diving. big gold looking. Yeah, things like, with, like, like the Men the of Honor. Remember the movie? Yeah, where, exactly. Where yeah, okay. Matter of fact, the school that I went to were the ones that actually helped with that film as well. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, okay. Diving Institute of Technology in Seattle. Are those they things really that heavy? I know yes. when watching that movie, I was just like, and whenever they made him do that walk, do do they really make you do that? Um, um, is that, sometimes that I think Hollywood? it was for fun. I think it was a lot of for fun. The instructors because they wanted to keep us in shape, so we were always doing something that sure, they sure. figured. Even our first day there, making us throw on our dry suits, and we're supposed to break them in, but we were swimming in the water for like ever, wow. just almost dying, and there's wow. people throwing up. And did you ever feel yeah. like claustrophobic? Because I think that would have been my biggest fear, like being in that suit and you're kind of closed up. So they have tests to see if you're claustrophobic, or they they got to ask well, you. Well, they do a dry fit, you know, before you get in the water. They want to see if you have it on. And there's actually people who did drop out once they put it on. They just said, uh, I can't do Because it's like this. you're just like wow. right And then there. some right before you get in the water, when we actually do it, they just couldn't do it. Wow. And so I'm going gonna, gonna to go back wow. on something. So you said there, there was a transition from the uh, Army into looking for a job. So mm -hmm. how tough was it looking for it? I mean, you knew that you wanted to be an actor, mm -hmm. but you didn't sought out. I mean, did you, did you sought out work right away, or were you... Did you go to Chuck E. Cheese? I mean, what what, what did you do? <laughs> was it tough? Because to, there's veterans out there right now. It's it's tough for them to find a job, and they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. You know? it, I mean, there's so many uh, different programs getting out. I had uh, I was fortunate. I had good mentors mm -hmm. to make sure that whatever I needed mm -hmm. to go find out. And I was one that liked to ask a lot of questions. Good. That's so a good thing. I always asked what did I need to do in order getting out and everything. And that's where. I went to uh, like the counselors there on the base and everything and found out the programs, how to make sure I get my GI Bill ready. So that way when I was getting out, basically I got out and went right to the academy in Seattle. Nice. So you basically prepared yourself because you knew your time was going to be ending and you had, a, yes. you had a map. Yeah. You knew exactly what you wanted to do. Yeah. I, I knew it was going to be dive and acting and then it was the acting where I just figured I had a, a love for just producing, and that's nice. what brought me back out here. And you have your own production company now, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. tell us yeah, about we're that. We're finalizing the paperwork next week. Congratulations. Yeah, thank that's you so much. That's awesome. It's been a, a journey to get there, you know, yeah. but I love it. It's a great feeling to have it, you know, and I just thank all the mentors that I had in the military because, mm -hmm. honestly, you know, you, you always have the good and bad in everything, um, but I just had so many more goods that came out of just the military. When you, mm -hmm. when you, you do talk about the bad, did you... Uh, have you experienced anything with PTSD or know anyone who has? Uh, yeah. Um, or myself, I, I haven't had it. Um, I know there's a little bit of, they did try, um, or they did, and they told me I had a little bit of the anxiety disorder. I mean, there's so much you're going to take out of what you do, especially in deployment. Sure. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> Afghanistan was definitely a, an animal mm -hmm. to uh, be tamed with, but uh, did you I have a lot of friends that do deal with that. Have you have you dealt with your personal issues at all? By have you used the VA uh, um, uh, the VA facilities at all? Yeah, actually, I go to the one right here in Westwood. Okay, yeah, well, right off of Wilshire. They're yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Everyone yeah. that I've worked with there, they've just been you know nothing but help, constantly yeah. checking in and making sure if I need anything else, and they've been helpful. Or if this program's not working, we have this one. This may be mm -hmm. better for you. That's and there's great. just there's so, so much. So you've got so, options. Yes, they there's give you plenty lessons. of options. So the there. stigma that a lot of veterans have, in your opinion, you think that it's 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 false, meaning that I'm not going to go to the VA because uh, it, uh, it has a lot of bad juju on it. I mean, yeah. you found nothing but good, correct? I've, I found nothing but good. You know, in my experience, mm -hmm. uh, I know the media. They kind of right. make it look a little bit more because it, it sells a little bit. But honestly, I mean, they want to help you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what they're there for. You just have to ask, and that's a problem with us. And, and you just we nailed it. Like a lot of sometimes. yeah, a lot of them are not. Gonna, you know, they're not going to come to you. You got to go to them, and once yeah. you go to them, then they're there for you. So that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, it, is, it is very cool. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of these vets come on here and you, we get choked up about it. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, But that's is. what a, a lot of people have, have <clears> said <throat> to us. They were like, and they, whenever they talk to our viewers, they're like, you just got to ask. You yeah. do. You just got to ask. And, even, and even, even with jobs, I mean, there's so much work out there, especially for veterans. And believe it or not, I have learned that there is more respect for veterans uh, than the average Joe, if you will. Uh, that, are, that if you say that I'm a veteran, you're looking for work. Uh, there are so many veterans out there that, that have veteran-owned businesses. I mean, we have a wonderful organization that, that we work with on occasion. It's called WeHireHeroes.us. Yeah, I've, and, I've heard of that. Well, you've heard of yes, them, yeah. yeah. And we, we tweet about them all the time. Uh, they're a wonderful organization. You go, on, you go on their website, and they've got, you can post jobs, you can take jobs off there. They have another thing here. It's called Civilian Boot Camp and uh, uh, it, they, they coach veterans on how to find jobs and careers, and they, they give you direction. Stuff that we didn't have. I was in the Cold War, you know, and we oh didn't, we, we, yeah, I'm, I'm that old, right? <laughs> <laughs> she joined, I'm, I'm the speed limit, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, there's so much, there's a plethora, and plus we didn't have the internet back then. We had a, we had a, we had a penny, penny saver in LA Times, yeah. and guess what, if your pencil yeah. broke, now you gotta go buy a pencil. Mm -hmm. So now, now I'm not so gonna go true. buy a pencil or a pen, and you know what? I have that mentality, and uh, no, so next time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I think the stuff that we have out there now, and, and stuff that you're doing, I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's we're in a digital age too, right? right? I mean, it's well, almost if you need to find out something, if you're afraid to ask someone, you don't want to, then just go to Google. I think Google that's key. It. You know? That's what I always say. You can just go to Google. He asked me and find a question. Out. I'm like, just go Google it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so true because I mean, there's a, I believe it's helmet to hard hat is another one, and it helps vets. Uh, you know, transition if they want to get into uh, unions, different types of unions, like plumbers unions or any, any union that's out there. That's great to and know. And that's another great transition if they yeah. want to, you know, for just, you know, any mm -hmm. of the blue collar stuff as well. If that's right. what you love doing and everything, that's that's right. another great program. I mean, okay. you find everything on Google too. Right, <laughs> yeah, everything. That's really that. true. Well, yeah. is there anything that we didn't touch on here today that uh, you want to kind of let our, our brothers and sisters know mm -hmm. uh, you know, that right maybe you can give them help or uh, let them know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, what I would say is that just to touch uh, for the PTSD and everything, I know it's hard to uh, talk about it or anything like that, but try. Uh, there's so many people out there that want to help you. I found nothing but great people out there. Uh, you still have your, your battle buddies, you know that word, and we're still out there. You just talk to them. Talk to your friends. And for all of you that are out there who know who has that, talk to them as well. You know, if you see the traits or anything like that, be there for them and help them do that because sometimes they just need that extra, you know, nudge or just that companionship there, their friend to help them through this time. So don't be afraid to do it. Trust me, it, it'll benefit you and you'll feel so much better getting past it, you know? Wow. Good great, advice. Great very words, advice. great words from yeah, Jacob and uh, very inspirational. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being on our show, buddy, and thank yeah. you for your thank service. Thank you for having man. me again. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Yeah. Thank Pleasure. you. Thanks, thank you man. so much. So thank nice you. to meet you. Folks, our next guest, he's a father of four. He was in the Marine um, Reserves, and he's also a firefighter paramedic. You want to stay tuned to hear his story. Stay tuned. We've got more Life After War coming up on EmpowerMe.tv. This is Jillian Rigsby, U.S. Army Sergeant Retired, coming to you live from Universal Studios Orlando, and you're watching Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. Hi, I'm Mike Elizalde. I'm a retired second class petty officer in the United States Navy, and you're watching Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. Hi, I'm retired Army Master Sergeant Patrick Berman, and you're watching Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. Welcome back to Laugh After War. I'm Jeff Bornstein with Kimberly. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Our next guest, he was in the Marine Reserves for a total of eight years, and he's currently a firefighter in Azusa, California. Please welcome Mitch Orsat. Mitch, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the show, bud. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks yeah, for being it. here. We've not, time. I awesome. know we've not seen you. It feels like forever. Phone contacts and text messages. <laughs> <laughs> I had you on another show uh, years ago. It was called The Bunker. Remember I that? Remember, I remember That's that. That's where we met. That's the first time yeah, we met. Yeah. It's yeah. about 90% yeah. smaller than this space right here. R right. <laughs> it, it, actually, well, I'll tell you about it. It was about the size of this table. Yeah, but, correct. Uh, <laughs> so, Mitch, let's go all the way back to the beginning, okay? What made you sign up to be a Marine Reserve? Share with us that story. I had a very bad relationship. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That'll do it. 20 years old, and I was young, dumb, and wanted to have fun, and she was older than me. Oh, wow. Ah, Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And uh, needed, okay. needed a place to grow up. 
I was already EMT, working for an ambulance company. Oh, you were an EMT before you even went in? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I know actually that. had like a real job and a real paycheck, mm -hmm. you know, and then okay. I'm like, well, you know, I need to get a kick in the pants and grow up a little bit and walked in the recruiter's office in the Culver City and Navy. I was like, eh, Army, eh, no offense. Too late. And I was like, <laughs> no, those Marines, that looks pretty badass. Nice. I didn't even consider the Coast Guard because they're not really considered, you know, don't tell it to a coastie. Yeah, <laughs> negative. They will drown you. So you yes. signed. So I signed. I sat in and signed. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. Be a cop, whatever. Well, yeah, sign here, blah, blah, blah. Show me all the cool videos. And they did. And I was like, okay, great. Went to boot camp. Reality check. Came back three months later. 195 went in. We came back at 174. It was like just emaciated. Just, you know. <laughs> right. And then I was like, great. Oh, now I'm back in reality. Oh, you're still here. Okay, great. Well, now I'm a Marine. So how about that? Right. So you grew yeah. up. Grew up. Really I mean, yeah, you. yeah. You know, to have my daughter, you know, Emily, and then from there, just kind of. I did not know that you had. You have four kids. Oh, I know about the other three. I did not know. You, I didn't know that you were married uh, one other time. Mm -hmm. Keeping stuff from me? No. I didn't know about this. He grew mm -hmm. up. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> you grew up a lot of that. And who was, and that's who, fantastic. We, saw, we just saw a picture. Where's that other picture at? There it is. This is oh, your family. That's a oh great yes. Picture. Tell us about this picture. That was. Uh, let me see. Where was that? Oh, we were whale watching out of Long Beach. Nice. Oh, nice. And we got in the front of the boat, and uh, I mean, the kids were just stoked to see the dolphins. The dolphins, and this is it, part when the whales were migrating, so we saw a couple humpbacks out there, no big deal. Nice. But the dolphins were just chilling on the wake of the boat, and they were just surfing. Just and like in the movies. It, <laughs> and they would go nice. underneath the catamaran and come back out. And, and nice. It's like, ah, oh, my wife. And Veronica's like, hold on to the kids. <laughs> hold on. And just, it, so, yeah, it was really cool. How Very cool. cool. Is that? that was a great picture. Was so let year. me ask you. So, so, so to go back, you're, you're in the Marines, but you weren't married to Veronica yet. No. Right? And you had mm -hmm. no kids at that time. No. Okay, because I met you when you guys got Correct. married, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you're in the Marines, and you were over in Iraq. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many tours did you do? One tour. One tour. That which is enough for some guys, mm -hmm. right? And I remember last time we spoke um, on the on the other show, uh, you had mentioned that uh, you had witnessed the IED. Yep. Tell us about that. What happened? The uh, the IED was actually um, a call that we got in after we went through Nazaria. So if you remember Jess Jessica Lynch mm -hmm. and her truck that got blown up mm -hmm. and she got. Um, taken away for a while. SEALs came and saved her. We passed that truck and, and went in and we got a call. There's a, a convoy heading our way with a bunch of troops mixed in with civilians. And at that time it was shoot to kill, nobody on the road. If you get caught on the road, you're going to get 5.56 five, right pointed at you, 50 caliber round, whatever. Oh. And so I guess the IED had, one of their IEDs had gone off under their bus because they went over it. And then we had one of our, uh, either it was an Abram or another heavy gun that actually hit the bus right after the ID went off because the guys were coming out shooting back and then just body parts everywhere. Jeez. What was going through your head? What uh, was, your mind? I was saying Literally. to myself, holy shit, this is actually real. Yeah. And we were getting shot at in the convoy because we were in Humvees. You're right in the middle of everything. Yeah. Too. And, I, yeah. and you, you know, you're in the moment. I'm driving. Oh, so you're the driver. Because our mortar team is mechanized. We're on Humvees or yeah. uh, 81 millimeter mortars. We don't carry them or hump them in. Mm -hmm. Driving through out Nazaria, we're getting shot at. Marines are on the ground. I passed the ass end of a, a, a one Abram, which is our big, big boy tanks, mm -hmm. and it the tur just turned one way towards a towards a house. And as soon as my truck went by, it just went <laughs> boom, and just underneath it, your truck, it went well, off. Well, no, or just your... the shock wave of of the cannon going off. It just moved our truck, Jeez. and uh, and at that point, I was like, oh, this is real. And you can hear the bing, bing, bing from the the small arms fire hitting our truck. Yeah. But it was nothing like that, and it was like, oh, this is real. Oh, wow. there's Marines on the ground over there. There's a, one of our Amtraks that got blown up. It and had to be so surreal. I mean, did it, did it, did it like, no pun intended, or pun intended, did it hit you at that moment, or wasn't it until you got home that it was like, this wow, is real. This, this is it real? It hit me when I saw that, the <clears throat> ID that exploded that bus, and I actually had to drive over dead bodies to get around them because we had no other way. It, and it was like, oh, there's a couple kids over there on the yeah. ground like like crap you know but you don't have a choice you no. have, you have to keep going you keep right? going it's one of those things like training you're in training and you, you got to act and so like when you find react, a moment not, to, right to chill and you're like whoa mm -hmm. so you that see all this craziness mm -hmm. okay as as most veterans have mm -hmm. and you bring this back uh into the united states 
How did it affect you? What happened? The probably the first week I was home. Uh, it's kind of funny story. I, I was in bed asleep, like we all do, but this time I rolled over and actually punched Veronica and got up and started yelling. Wow! Oh, well. And you and, were you were just I was, like I was you like, weren't there. Yeah, I was like I was like I don't I don't remember. She tells me, and then and then the next day I was uh, in the restroom, you know, doing my business, and it was kind of stormy outside, yeah. and a big thunderclap hit, and I l jumped off the toilet and started yelling like ah. Like, oh, like that. And to this day, that still scares me. It's called um, hypervigilance. Mm -hmm. So tell us could, what is hypervigilance. Hypervigilance is, is basically like from my anti-terrorism training and because mm -hmm. I'm a paramedic now, mm -hmm. because I've had terrorism training with my hazmat unit, you're trained to, to be more vigilant than the regular Joe on the street to look for other things that aren't out of the... What are you looking for? You're looking beyond looking what you're Looking beyond seeing. like just you walking past me. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, she smells a little different, not just her perfume. Well, there's something different. You know, they're mm -hmm. acting funny. Mm -hmm. You know, why is this guy standing across the street taking pictures of this building? Uh, so, why is this truck from the government parked across from my so house? So it's more like recon. Yeah, basically it is. Right. And in the middle of the night, I'd be walking across the firehouse floor and not paying attention. And some, one of my guys would be walking around the corner. And I just scares the shit out of me, like, I'm not, like, not even paying attention. And mm. it's part of that whole PTSD thing. Like, it's like, damn. Mm. That sucks. Are you doing anything mm -hmm. to get help for this right now, or have you well, got because help? Because I've been using the VA for a while now. They Good for have you. offered the psychological part. Mm -hmm. um, I've had seen a couple of therapists for it. And, and is then, that helping you? To a certain degree. Talking to somebody that hasn't really been there, all they hear is all day long, like the same stuff. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. But when I talk to actual veterans that I respond on as a paramedic that have been there, a couple of World War II guys, a couple of Vietnam guys who are pretty screwed up. Um, and I, just sharing with them, like, hey, devil dog, what's going on? Which is a term for Marines. Mm -hmm. uh, we call each other that, jarhead. Uh, then I started, yeah, I was in, I served. Like, just talking about my experience, that's like my therapy. It's kind of it like out. your own yeah. language. And then the guys at work tell me, hey, what's going on? You know, what did you see over there? Well, how come we don't talk about it? I'm like, well. Well, even, even, even yeah. firefighters, I mean, you don't have to be a, a military to have PTSD. Firefighters get yeah. it, cops get it, women mm -hmm. who have Correct. been abused, even got men who have been abused. Any, any, in my paramedic school training, one of our, our things was we have to do a... a, a a story on something medical like you know some guys had to do heart attacks <clears throat> strokes i picked ptsd because it was so close to me and then you know, I, I did like a two-page summary of it and we had to get up in front of class and talk about it mm -hmm. so i mean yeah any type of hardcore nasty experience that anyone receives any part of their life you get ptsd because it's post-traumatic stress disorder right. something that holds on forever mm -hmm. a, a father that's an alcoholic you've been abused sexually right. abused ptsd mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah, how close, how, have you had any experience with the TBI at all? Traumatic uh, brain injury? No. I mean, with no. the shockwave? Did, did because of the mortars, uh, we had a, I, I was never, I never came in close contact with any heavy artillery, like, blowing up right next to me or any grenades. It mm -hmm. was always usually literally 50 feet or more. We were always behind cover. But um, that's still pretty close, Still though. pretty close, but yeah. nothing to where I was... Shooken up about, didn't lose consciousness over. But Mitch, you shared a great picture with us. I don't know, Kellen, um, the picture of Baghdad. From Baghdad. Do you look at that? Tell, so, tell us about this picture. So, so this is you dropping the mortar in. That in, that in looks the, so right? intense. Okay, let me set the picture up for it. We just crossed over the Rhine River. Um, Army Corps of Engineers was out there. Mm -hmm. They set their their tracks across the river, and I was the first Humvee to go up. Humvees four wheel drive. Put it in the uh, four low and just drive up this hill, come over to the other side. There's a bunch of washed out old um, uh, Iraqi army clothing and weapons and old food still sitting there. Come around the corner, there's literally hundreds of landmines on the street. Jeez. Mm. So they sent out some deck cord, they cleared it, big ass explosion. Um, and then right around the corner there, probably a hundred yards back behind that was a bridge we crossed over and there was a field. Fox Company was held down in Baghdad. They were surrounded. We had one of our guys who's a Ford Observer attached with them. Mm -hmm. So what a Ford Observer does, he calls in for fire. Like I'm at this coordinate, I'm this coordinate. Okay, hey, set up our gun line. There's eight guns out there. Mm -hmm. uh, seven of them worked. The other one was out of service for a bad firing pin. Five guys in each gun team and I was the A gunner. A gunner stand at the tube of the mortar and they drop the rounds. So they called in a 10 round fire for effect on, and they basically, here's the coordinates, one round, shoots it, 
it lands or doesn't land, readjust the numbers, but it landed right where they wanted it to. Wow. 10 round fire for effect, go. 70 highly explosive rounds coming into one area. Now, a, a mortar round has a kill radius of about I don't remember, 50 feet, more or less. I don't mm -hmm. remember the specifics, but 70 of those bad boys going off, it flattened a bunch of buildings and got Fox Company out. And of course, Rick nice. Leventhal was our Fox reporter that was with our unit. And he actually interviews a bunch of us there. Very cool. Yeah. Like right when it happened. He well, was right well, there. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so you're out of the Marines, and you have all this stuff going on, which is what, which is what we've been talking about here today. Mm -hmm. And you are now a firefighter mm -hmm. and uh, EMT. Mm -hmm. How has the transition into what you saw in Iraq, and now you're kind of seeing this stuff in, in, a, in a different life after war, if you will. You're still seeing... You're uh, still rescuing and saving people. You're still people rescuing. You're still, you're still saving lives, you know, mm -hmm. saving, saving assets. Yeah, the only thing I haven't done yet is calendar shoots, so we're still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> we could hook you up with Jennifer Marshall. Get yeah, better, right? with all the girls. Right? Working, hey, still but, fong, but, still uh, fong with her. So I had the, the EMT training prior to the Marine Corps. Right. So mm -hmm. I had some of the traumatic, like, nasty car accidents, gunshot wounds. So I'm like, oh, snap. Like, that's what a... a 38 caliber round looks like when it hit somebody. Then I went in the Marine Corps. Then it was like the other aspect of it. Then I finally went to war. Mm -hmm. Then I saw the blown off heads, the arms, the legs, our guys getting run over by our own Humvees. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was two guys. One of them passed away, and the other one survived but was paralyzed from the waist down. Yeah. But not to sound morbid, um, but seeing that has had to have helped you in your job right now as a yeah, paramedic. Definitely, because now as a paramedic. Because you I'm don't, like, you, get, you can't, you know, if I say, I'm going to go be a fireman or an EMT right now. Right, and now I come nothing back. I will, would not nothing will prepare will you. Prepare you nothing. to know that your body gives off that type of smell when it's decaying and dying and been in that home for two right. two weeks and mm -hmm. it's all bloated mm -hmm. and just all just nasty. My stepdad was a father. My mom's a PA. I've been around the medical field for a long time, but it's a different aspect now. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've been prepared for it, but nothing prepares you to be like, what smell is that? Even to this day. To this day, it's just, just like wow, and it's, it it sits wow. in your nostrils, just like you remember that yeah, saline, oh, yeah. lots of saline. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, buddy, mm. you know, I, it, it's been so awesome having you back on this show, yeah. and um, we're, we're we're dear friends. Please tell Veronica, give her our best. Yeah. We'd love yes. to well with we you guys. We consider you family. Yeah, you oh, are just family, love buddy. you guys. Yeah, yeah. Really and do. Um, uh, anything that you want to talk about here that we didn't cover on the show here today? If there's anything you want to say to some of our veterans that are maybe struggling with PTSD, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't want to get help. Yeah. If you could say anything to any of the viewers out there, men, women, even civilians, uh, look into the camera over here, over my shoulder, and uh, give it a shot. What do you got to say? Don't be like me, and when you get out and just kind of push the whole VA thing aside, you know, I, I waited about six years before I went and got help from the VA because that stuff adds up over time. Go get help. It's there. The government puts it there. Bring in your paperwork. Start the process. They have a lot of advocates down there. I'm an advocate, too, for my own department, and I help my own veterans and my personal coworkers get help they need. All you got to do is just walk in. Just walk in. Say, hey, look, I served. Where do I start? DD-214, and they'll tell you exactly what you need. Get the process going. Mm -hmm. That's it. Great words from a uh Great Marine and dear friend. Yes. Buddy, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. Pleasure. Thank, thank you very Thanks for your much. service, buddy. All right, all right, man. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks, pal. We love you. <laughs> Folks, thank you again so much for tuning in to Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. We'll see you next time. Thank you.